I think there's some coolant seeping at the bottom. Comes up we're the top. actually we're actually gonna get out of here. This is uh, this whole this, this seems very shady. Hey guys, Rich with Rich Rebuilds here, and I'm back with something really cool I want to show everyone. Now I made a video a while back about the Tesla battery trailer that Lee and I made together, which we thought it was really cool, but everyone complained about how it wasn't powered or how they were expecting batteries to be actually inside the trailer to add range to the car that was pulling it. Well, I didn't put batteries in it for a few reasons. One, I didn't want to tow with my Model S. Two, I don't need the extra range. And three, I wanted to be able to use it with different vehicles without having to worry about the needless weight penalty. So all this being said, I got a message on my Instagram, at RichieBKid, that there was a person that used a Tesla battery pack to add additional range to their EV. So I hopped in my Z06, drove four hours, and of course the car obviously broke down. So we hopped in my friend Sergey's Audi for the rest of the trip to see this battery pack trailer in person. And here is what we found. What is this? Hey, you made it. What is this? Man in the flash. My friend, how's it going, buddy? Well, nice meeting you. Nice to meet you, man. That's uh, you know, Sam, famous hey, Sam, hey, and going? Sergey. Sergey, Sergey one of three. So tell me more about this thing I'm looking at, this monstrosity here. Yeah, so this what? is my range extending trailer. The battery itself is a RAV4 battery pack. Toyota hired Tesla to make this car. It's a pretty cool piece of history because it really helped Tesla get started. The factory they actually use now for the Model S's, X's and everything so came cool. from this deal because that factory used to be a Toyota factory. Really? Because of this little redheaded stepchild, these two uh, car companies came together to make. <laughs> They, uh, they had a mini partnership because when I was taking apart my Tesla, the generation one DC to DC converter, it's a yeah. Toyota part. And when I called Toyota and cross referenced it, they're like, oh yeah, DC DC converter, you want it? I'm like, oh, whoa, no. it's crazy. And, that, that. and that's the trick is that like, you know how Tesla won't sell you parts, right. but if I call Toyota and order it through them, they'll happily give it to you. Wow. So the car itself uses a lot of Tesla parts, just like you're talking about. So it has the, the motor from Gen 1 Model S's, uh, has the Gen 1 charger. Which which motor is it? Do you know which motor? Is it the, uh, probably the small motor, I'm assuming, right? Uh, I definitely could get that info. I just actually don't know that off the top of my head. <laughs> it looks like a pretty decent sized one. I'm not really sure either, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm more interested in the amount of zip ties that were used for this. <laughs> That's Tony. That's a lot of zip ties. You gotta get a shot of this. This is uh, the JDMO, the quick charge power JDMO. Yep. So that's so why, that's so why Tony's do you, why, install. Why do you have this? Like, what's so? What's tell me more about this? So the car didn't come with a fast charging option. It's, right. It's really a shame, but they they built the car on a budget. Basically, they they had to offer the car, so they really just kind of threw it together. Basically. Right. So they didn't. It, it wasn't required by law that they had to have a fast charging option in order to get the mandate, the credits, and all that stuff in California. So it didn't include it. So the guy in California, Tony from Quick Charge Power, he's a huge Rav4 EV en guy. enthusiast. Yeah, right. Yeah, he's really in the EV world and. He designed all of this. He drove out here in his Model S yeah. and installed it. Well, here. That traitor, he has a Model S? He should have ever had a RAV4. <laughs> what the hell's going on? Uh, well, I think he's got like three. I think he's got like three uh, of these, of the RAV4, and a, a Model S and a three now, I think. Uh, I guess that makes yeah. sense. He's, do he's doing all right. He's keeping it. Yeah, he's doing okay for himself, right? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah, this, so this is added, and both battery packs are in parallel. So, when I charge off that, it's yeah. charging both at the same time. Ah. And this is uh, what I. Oh, look at this. this is this is a literal Tesla part number on oh, here, yeah. and yeah. it has the Tesla T on it. Yep. Look at that. So it's different design. It's similar modules. Yeah. Uh, but they're just different configuration. Like all the, I, I guess I could probably get technical with you because you get, probably know all this Get stuff technical is. with me. Go uh, ahead. So yours is uh, 96 series cells. Mm -hmm. This one is 92. Okay. So some of the other cars, like the smart car, I think is 90. Right. It's a little bit uh, older. So the, so the voltage is a, a little different, but these two battery packs are the same. I mean, they're both from RAV4s. They're both running in parallel, so what happens with that one when I charge, charges this one as well. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah. So then, so here's the thing. So I made a video called the Tesla battery pack trailer that. that wasn't actually powered. Oh, yeah. And the amount of shit that I got that for that totally. video, people were just like, it's not even a powered trail, you bastard. Yeah. But this is an actual powered, tra a Tesla literal battery yeah. powered trailer. My biggest fear was this. The reason why I didn't want to do it was because A, I'm lazy. Uh, B, I don't really drive that far. And C, I wasn't really sure how it would work bringing the high voltage from a pack and up from a remote pack and running it into the vehicle itself. That was my biggest thing, thinking about turns and twists and if the cables got bunched up and also having it go directly back into the, uh, right to the contact or back to the battery pack itself. Yeah. That and the Tesla battery pack is incredibly heavy. And I wasn't really sure about the weight penalty versus range. So, so what are you noticing here? How much does this weigh and how is it hooked up? 
So this battery pack alone is about 840 pounds. And okay. The trailer's a couple hundred pounds, so I usually say about a thousand pounds. And on the highway, there really isn't much of a penalty. It's really nice. So I, I was doing some testing. Uh, I took a trip to uh, the Poolville in Washington, D.C. for the drive electric stuff. So I did some testing with that, and I was getting about 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour on average. That was over about 200 miles. So it's actually really good. I mean, because once you get on the highway, once you're cruising along, right. it's in the slipstream of the it, car. Exactly. It's right behind the car anyways. It's in tires. Right. Uh, so it's really not that bad at all. Like, so wait. City driving is a pain in the My box. biggest concern is this. Why don't you have those moon covers? Actually, wait. Hold on. There's a safety thing here. You're actually missing a zip tie. I know. Right there. All right. Let's, uh, going to pass inspection. So yeah. So how come you don't have the moon covers over the trailer too? Uh, that just seems like sloppy work yeah, to me. Of course, <laughs> he, of course he called me out on that. <laughs> <laughs> this battery pack is actually a little bit well, it's older, but it's a little bit younger than this one, less use. So it's a 2012, but it uh, only had 4,500 miles on it. Oh wow! Uh, it's from a wrecked one, obviously, right? Yeah, unless unless you literally stole it from someone. Uh, I don't know if I should say, but it it kind of came from. Right, so we won't we won't talk about that too yeah, much. Cool. All right. So yeah, I just lucked out. I was looking all over for a battery pack. I didn't necessarily want a RAV4 battery pack. I actually kind of, I wanted a, a 100 kilowatt hour pack. Those are pricey. Uh, they are, and they're still hard to find. Yeah, they're, they're not that many wrecked 100Ds, well, yeah. 100, 100 kilowatt hour cars yeah. out there. So I found this, it just ends up being perfect because it's the same battery. The voltage is gonna be the same. Running right. in parallel is gonna be super easy. But like you, with what you saw with the trailer heat, yeah. everything on there, I, I had all that before you even, before you even posted that video. So I was actually defending you a little bit. I had comments in there about, no, it's definitely possible. Yeah. It's stupid. He's not gonna blow up his family. Right. It works. So I want to do the same thing here with the 100 kilowatt hour pack. Yeah. Uh, I also want to take the case and just stuff it full of the modules from the 100 kilowatt hour pack and put that under the car. Oh, so put it on the car itself. Underneath, yeah. Jesus, man. I mean, how far do you drive? Not really. It's just a, a cool thing. thing. Yeah, yeah, the fun thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I used to drag race. I was always <laughs> into cars, and you'd always soup up your car right. and play around. And this is just another way of souping up your car and, and doing something cool. So let's get into so two things. How much range do you get with, with both packs? So for range, for the car itself, yep. without towing anything, my record when it was new was 144 miles. Okay. Which is pretty, pretty good. Especially for a, a bigger car like this. Now I'm around 130 because it's degraded a little bit. Yeah, over time. 3,000 miles. With both around 250, maybe 260. Okay. So I have 41 kilowatt hours in this and about 39-ish in that one. All right, so, yeah, so, so about 260-ish. Yeah. Okay. And so you want, so you're saying you want to do uh, a trailer and you want to add more batteries underneath yeah. of the car that's, as well. That's the goal. It only takes money, right? Uh, that's all, yeah. That's all you need. <laughs> you ever think of getting a different platform? Maybe an... I love this car. Yeah, okay. I mean, do you have any car... kids? Yeah, we yeah, just have my first. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks. Awesome. Yeah. So we've got room in the car seat there. We have a dog that we take everywhere so we can fit the crate right back here. Right. But for the price, it's really hard to beat the RAV4. It's just True. an awesome car. You get a Model X. I'm just yeah, kidding. Yeah. A yeah. For a hundred thousand dollars. Right. How much was this when it was new? So when it was new, they were really expensive. They were in the thirties, right? It was about 50,000. Holy shit. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. I thought you were going to say the thirties, like no, mid high, mid high thirties. And from what I've heard, mostly through Tony, is they lost about $40,000 in every one of these they sold. I believe it, 50 yeah. grand. I, yeah. just, I, I just go there and spit on them at the dealership. That's amazing. <laughs> do you care to share how much you paid for this? Or do you want to keep so it? Does your I, wife know how much you paid for this? With the car or the trailer? Both. Uh, she knows about the car. The trailer, maybe, maybe I love you. Uh, but it was about six grand for the battery, which is a steal. That's not bad. No, it's, it's a steal. No. Uh, and then I've got about another thousand fifteen hundred to the trailer else. that's nothing yeah it's really not bad that's no, not bad at all dude yeah no i don't think no. she'll be too surprised by no that. no that, that, that's totally fine <laughs> so i think my lease was like 450 a month yeah but because uh toyota didn't advertise the car they didn't want people to know that they could build it really they, they we, were trying to give them away at this point because exactly. no one really knew so i i got a great lease deal on it and they actually gave me unlimited mileage really so if i was going to turn it in I, it wouldn't have mattered drove a hundred thousand miles on it and it would have mattered but. right so what's in this box Oh, so that's all the important stuff. Drugs? Yeah. Hey, wait, hold on. You have a little, uh, little round green light. This is, like, this is yeah, fancy. Yeah, so this is the on-off button here. Yep. And this is a contact or kill button here. So if there's ever any issue, I can just 
quickly turn off the contactors that are inside the pack here. Uh huh. Um, and so, then I have a light, so I if I know cooling is being called for, if the heat's being called. So how for. do you have this wired in? Are those directly on the contactors themselves? Those high voltage cables? Like how do you have these right here? Like um, how are those wired in? So it goes right into a junction box right there, and yeah. I just tied in with a, with the junction box that was there from the factory. Okay. So once the contactors are turned on, then I have power here. Oh, so you you control the contactors from this box? Yeah. Oh. Yep. Okay. And then I actually, for safety, I have another set of contactors that in a box that I put in the back of the car here. Right. So I installed a switch on my dash. So what I do, in, in order to charge, I turn this on first. Yep. I come over here. Usually I, I start the charge first. Yep. And then I hit the button on my dash to, to close these contactors back here. Right. And then, they, then they're actually in parallel. All right. So tell me what's going on in the box. So inside the box uh, is all my pump. It's the controller here. Okay. It shows pack voltage current going into the pack right now uh status for the contactor so right now it says closed oh so it says uh pack voltage 375 yep uh 65 amps and, and the uh, bottom line cycles through different stats max temp, temperature. yeah so that tells you that's a lot of cool shit, man yeah and so, it also does all the switching too which is nice so you guys were looking at this earlier and previously i had a lot of things manual until i had the controller so i had levers to move the, the fluid through this compared to the Tesla heater, which you've seen those before. And that's that's just you cooling the uh, the coolant, is that right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So I used to do all that stuff manually. Oh, I like those PC oh. fans, those are cool, man. That's the one I, yeah. I gave you the heater. Yeah, those the fans are. Oh wait, really that's nice. the uh, that's the Tesla yeah. oh, the yeah. Tesla heater. I yep. see it. It's like we have the same one in here too. Really? Yep. Same exact one in the Rav4. Um, so the controller now does all that switching, and I don't have to do anything with it anymore. It's really easy. So this. Uh, it's kind of a rare part, got it from China. It's a 12 volt three-way valve. So depending on if it's saying it needs heating or cooling, yeah. it'll divert the, the fluid. It's a switching. So cool, that was cool. like 30 bucks oh, compared I'm, to no, that's the awesome. Tesla part. Yeah, which is, yeah, which you can't even really get. They, they have it in like one. BMWs and so that's what I have, but so it's like an OEM, like you could use it too. What, uh, these right here? Yeah, like the three-way valve. Okay. The bottom, yeah. 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 That's pretty wild. So you have the heat, charge, high voltage contactors. Yep. A voltage pack. This and thing's pretty mean. Thing right there. Yeah, it's a little ras what is that? Raspberry Pi? What is that? It's a car loop. It's a car loop dongle. So that right there is an OBD2 connector. Yep. And that'll send uh, data from the pack. And then I also have another one for the Rav4. Yeah. It'll send it to an iPad that I have in the car, so I can look at all my pack voltage, all the specs while I'm driving. Well, maybe not while I'm driving when I'm yeah. pulled over safely. Of course. Um, <laughs> so it's like a remote display, effectively. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, this thing's pretty solid. And this is what a oh solar charge can. What do you have us? Yeah, so I got the, so the trickle charger there. So if it's off, uh, it does have a DC to DC converter oh. here. Right. So when the system is on, it's always recharging the 12 volt battery. Gotcha. Uh, so it's not going to go dead. But if I don't turn it on for a while, it, it could. I mean, batteries go dead. Yeah. So I have a 30 watt panel on the top just to trickle charge it. That's not bad. It keeps the battery charged at all times. I mean, yep. that's so everything's self containing. Do you have a lock for this thing? I would be, I'd be terrified oh, yeah. of this thing getting stolen. I got locked there and I've got cables that I'll put on the uh, wheels uh, anytime I park. Do you have like a stuff. GPS for this thing? Uh, yes. Where, where do you park this thing? What's your home address? <laughs> I think there's some coolant seeping at the bottom. It comes we're, the we're actually, we're actually going to get out of here. This is, uh, this whole, this seems very shady. No, <laughs> don't touch it. Don't touch anything. Yeah. No, that's that's yeah, that's one fly. I still got I still got to work on. That's um. But it's with all the bouncing, it, it somehow comes out the top. This thing must bounce like crazy. Yeah. 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 So I actually put a little piece of rubber in there, and it still makes it. You right thought around. of everything. So where do the cables run? Those those high voltage cables run underneath the car. They, they come up underneath in the back. Okay. So there's a big empty area under here. Yep. That I was able to just drill through some thin metal and get up it inside and then it goes through this, the middle of the car yep. and then comes out through the firewall uh, on the left side over there. Right. And it joins over in that area where uh, all those magic zip ties are. That's pretty so wild. it comes up on the left over there. And then what is it? It ties directly into the charger. It ties into um, the JDMO contactors that he has right underneath here. Ah, okay. So he added a box that's under here that was just normally empty. So there was a lot of room for him to add his, his parts here. Right. And I just tied into the battery side of that. Okay. And what's this uh, fuse over here for? Uh, this goes to a distribution block I have in the back that, can, that provides power to uh, the contactors okay. that are inside the car that I added. Nice. And whatever else I need power back there for. You're making me want to do this, man. I think we should. I wasn't, I wasn't so damn lazy. <laughs> it's, it's actually, it really wasn't that bad. I, I started maybe January yeah. of 
last winter. Yeah. I had it done by May. Uh, my whole goal was to have it done for a, a road trip to Chicago. Yeah. Out there for a wedding. So this is a fascinating project. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of haters out there, I'm wagging my oh. finger, that, that said that this couldn't be done, and this guy did it. You know, I made a sexy trailer that does nothing, <laughs> and this guy made a very utilitarian, rugged trailer that actually is very useful. So I think that's super impressive, man. I think that's, that's really cool. I wanted it to be self-containing. Yeah. So that this could be at my house. And my plan was eventually to get solar panels and stuff for my house. Yeah. And this would be a home energy storage for the house as well. well you could put power back into the house exactly. effectively. Yeah. That's so a smart all I idea. have is the Anderson connector there, and I would just need a home inverter. Right. To take the power from this to send it to the house. Right. Uh, but also, it's great if you have like a cabin or if you want to travel and take your power with you or something, and you do have power in the house. Right. Yeah, there's there's definitely a lot of possibilities. There's a, there's a lot going in this. This, this is a lot, man. Yeah. Why do you have this uh, emergency white lithium grease in here? <laughs> like, what, uh, it's, it's from the controller, or the uh, connector here. I see. Yeah. I, f I figured you'd notice that and bust my balls about it. Yeah, no, 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 <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm like, uh... You should have known, you knew I was coming. So you knew it was gonna I happen. Should, I should have taken it out. You should have taken it out. <laughs> but no, this is this is impressive. I like this a lot. This is uh, reminiscent of uh, when I first saw Sam's build. Heck yeah, that this, was cool. This is I saw uh, that in the video. I'm like, wow, that's neat. <laughs> yeah, I know. Watched that twice. <laughs> yeah. Hey, buddy. Nice meeting you, man. Nice meeting you. Thank you too. very much. This Thanks was for coming out. This is this is a, this is an awesome experience. How much of a drive do you have back? Uh, about 210 miles. It's, it's really not too bad. It's like four hours. Yeah. I usually keep it about 58, 60, somewhere right around there. Do you get all looks on the highway with this thing? Pulling this pack? Um, I don't really notice. Yeah, cause, it, you know why? Cause, past you know highway. why? Cause it's like a white, like, it's a white obscure box yeah. on the back of it. What, what was weird that I was a little nervous about? I had to pick up my wife at O'Hare. Yeah. With this. Oh yeah, good luck. So I was a little nervous about pulling in there and they're gonna, what the hell is this? Yeah. Yeah, here are the cops. <laughs> come come with us. Is there any way for you to charge the pack without the car? I can't, but I, I do want to work on that. So okay. I, I want to add a, a Gen 2 uh, Tesla charger. There's some guys who have hacked them. So I'd, I'd like to try to get one of those in here, but also maybe get another Chadmo charger attached to this. So then I, I could really charge a lot quicker. Right. All, I, all I'd have to do is close the contactor back here. And have so it go directly to the, right. Yeah, and then just charge them both. Oh, so you can charge it, you can charge it independently. You could close the contactors here yeah. and have it go right to this, but you don't have well, control. No. You don't have control over those contactors, right? Is that what yeah, it is? So I have a button on the, on the dash. It just says AUG's battery. It was just a, a switch that I found. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of cool. So that'll turn on and off the contactors in the back of the car. Right. So that'll either connect both packs or disconnect both. Okay. So if I close that, I can still charge this car normally and this car would just be its own just like kind of thing new. yeah that's cool man all right dude hey awesome i appreciate that i'm gonna shake your hand again yeah, yeah this, thanks, this, man. this 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 was a this was an awesome uh i, I thing. feel pretty that, honored that i i impressed rick rebuilds you know what you can do to charge the separate you can get a little avc2 board it's your tricks of j1772 into thinking that it's plugging in yeah and you could just literally hook it up you just you would need some kind of be a mess just to monitor it but you could easily just set it up say at this voltage per cell and just cut off something like that all right cool man yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, everyone. Sergey, I, I just, you guys are great. So uh, this is going to be really interesting. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed that video. Sorry the camera was jumping around so much. I was obviously very excited. If you have any questions for James, his email slash YouTube is in the description box below. And don't forget to stay tuned and subscribe for more interesting builds like this one, as well as some really cool electric conversions. I will see you guys soon.